सो हे गाइज I welcome you all to HS Academy, advancing HS profession through awareness. So, guys, in today's video, we are going to discuss about one popular and demanding certification in the field of fire protection. Uh, some of you may be heard about certified fire protection specialist, which is one of the demanding qualification from NFPA. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to basically review that course and uh, discuss about the main points with regards to that course. So, video is again going to be informative for you guys. If you are new to this channel and visiting first time to our channel, kindly subscribe to this channel because it is absolutely free and hit the bell icon for the notification of every single video that I'll upload in the near future. So let's get straight to the video. So guys, certified fire protection specialist. Okay, so in every field, in general, if I talk to you, in general, in every field, there will be a certification that will be in the top. Okay, for example, in the field of occupational health and safety, there is a CSP certification, which we all know already, certified safety professionals. So when we talk about a different field, when we talk about lonely about fire, okay, if we want to achieve something big in the field of fire, so we need we require some specialized certification in the field of fire, okay. So safety related, it's CSP, but in fire related, it is CFPS. It is a gold standard certificate which is awarded by NFPA in the field of fire protection. Okay, now CFPS means Certified Fire Protection Specialist, which is basically uh, basically created in 1971. The main aim of this particular certification was to uh, basically identify and certify those individuals who have responsibilities and who have the competence in the field of fire protection, both physically as well as financially. Okay, so now basically we see the examination. Okay, what is the examination and type of questions that will be asked? So it is basically a totally technical examination okay apart from simple stories which we, which we wrote in occupational health and safety it's a totally technical examination so what you have to do for that examination is if if you want to appear for that examination there are basically eligibility criteria which is defined by nfpa okay as per nfpa basically there are three types of eligibility first is if you have any bachelor's or master's safety in the field of fire protection so you need at least two years of experience in the this fire okay both physically as well as financially so you should be have experience in fire fire loss or you can say in the field of fire second category is if you have associate degree in fire or from an unrelated field unrelated field in the, mean the, in the sense is a field which is indirectly focusing or indirectly helping the fire protection engineering field okay it may be a civil electrical mechanical and all okay so it will be like that so if you have such type of qualification then you need at least four years of experience and whatever the experience you are showing over there it should be verifiable means if a third party is coming it should be verif verifiable so you should not put any fake experience and all because if you put any facts fake experience that it is going to be a very problem for us now third category is you should have a high school diploma now we are not talking about india's high school diploma means 10th 10th class okay it should be equivalent to us high school diploma okay because nfp is a us based certification so it should have a equivalency with the us based high school diploma then you need at least four years of experience for that if you have a four years of experience again in fire both physically and financially then you can appear for that particular examination now if we talk about the fees how much is the fees for that and uh, how uh, we can pay that so see there are basically again three types of fees is there first is for appearing if you are a fresh candidate you are appearing for the examination then you need to pay around 350 us dollars okay so 350 us dollars is the first current fees okay you can estimate depending upon your geographical area wherever you are living if you are in india you can just check out the current currency equivalency and multiply that again if you are reattempting the examination means uh, unfortunately you got failed first time after that again you are attempting the examination that it is going to be 175 per attempt okay if you are going for again renewal of the certification because it requires a renewal okay it will be around 125 us dollars so these are the three fees criteria that will be involved in that. Now question, main question comes over there is how we can prepare for that examination. What is the examination pattern? How we will know that? So see, uh, for preparation and uh, how to use such credentials and all, I'll be taking one webinar on the upcoming Sunday, probably, if everything was fine. Okay, I'll be taking one webinar, but for your help, you can just visit to the NFPA website and download the CFPS handbook. Or, okay, it is a 26 to 30 page handbook, which will help you, which will guide you in all things okay so for the preparation of examination of cfpa certified fire protection specialist nfpa suggests that you should use a fire protection handbook okay i already previously gave you the particular review of fire protection handbook you can search out on our channel 
how to use, utilize that particular book and uh, what are the contents available that already I gave the review. So you should use that book both first and second part of 20th edition of Fire Protection Handbook which is provided by NFPA. Now basically this particular book is uh, will cost you around 20 plus thousand, 20 plus K in India if I talk about. Okay, so if you are interested you can buy that book because it is the only book which is which is going to be help you for that examination. Now basically the exam pattern how it is going to be like that so see it is basically a totally mcq type question examination and as well as open book examination now what is the meaning of open book examination you will be having the book both first edition and second volume means two volumes you will be having of 20th edition of fire protection handbook so within the duration of time whatever the nfp will give you you need to just what you have to do is refer this book for answer finding purpose now some people will think that it is very go going to be very easy for you we will just uh, roll that book and easily find the answers but no there are a lot of things that you need to understand from this book because the, if you see the length of this book it will be around 3500 pages so it is not going to be very easy for you you need to uh, particularly tag that book after after that go throughout the revision you need to do the re re revision and all okay so it will be like that now how you can give the examination so there are basically two ways nfpa defined how you can give the examination first is paper pencil examination second is computer testing based examination so paper pencil in the sense you will be go to uh, you will be going to a dedicated center there you need to write one examination okay through, uh, by mcq type by using your pencil other is computer based examination you need to just go to the testing centers and write your examinations over there ba basically it's M mcq so it is not going to be very hard now if we talk about the results, if you are going for a computer based examination, the results will be shown to you immediately after examination within the duration of 15 to 20 minutes, they will show you the result. But, but when we talk about the physical paper and pencil examination, so at that time it is going to be a problem because the examination may take, the results may take around 4 weeks to come. Okay, it will take around 4, four weeks to reach the uh, results to you. Okay, now we have discussed about some main things now after when whenever we pass this particular examination so we will really, we will be having a what you can say access to use the designatory words of cfps as i told you the difference between certification and certificate in our previous videos you can check out that also okay so after completing that you will be eligible to use cfps these four letters after your name which will clearly demonstrate to your employer that you have demonstrated your fire protection engineering knowledge as well as fire protection knowledge in the field of in a, against the examination okay after that you can use the full name also certified fire protection specialist based upon you now some guys are there who fakely use such credentials means that they don't know about this credential simply they got these letters and use after that name so nfpa is very strict against that particular things if you do such things means they will totally ban you as well as put your name publicly so you will be not having access to do such certifications in the near future okay now we have talked about that now questions comes here how will be the examination what will be the chapter means how the questions will be asked so see as i told you lots of chapters are there you can you must check out our fire protection handbook uh, book review so under that particular sections there will be some weighted weighted percentage for example from detection and alarms which is one of the you can say section within the fps fire protection handbook that will be 12 percent for example 12 percent from safety in the built-in environment there will be two percent for fire protection systems there will be 10 percent so like weightage will be there so you you just need to study for just getting past you just need to study the main sections from the highest average means if a section is there from where the nfp is going to ask about 50 to 60 percent then you need to prepare for that okay so it is be it is going to be like that now now after the hard work too much of hard work some individuals got fail in that examination because as i told you it's a gold standard examination in the field of fire protection okay so what you have to do when you got failed so whenever if you unfortunately you got failed you will be getting a diagnostic report from nfpa national fire protection association so nfpa will tell you from each section how much wrong answer you gave okay means it will be like your analysis report so next time you can improve and come with a more power and more knowledge okay now we have done with that now it, uh, let me give you one important tip that is with regards to fph now some guys are there they just buy that fire protection handbook and just memorizing that particular book so it is you should not done do that guys because it is too much waste because nfp fph is a very book a big book okay uh, compromises of very technical concepts as well as normal concepts also so it is totally waste to remember that book but yeah for examination perspective you need to just memorize the chapter names from where the questions are coming okay 
do not learn that memorize that full book because nfp also suggests that you need to utilize you need to just put that book for a reference in your near future so do not memorize that full book okay now after that from where you can prepare for cfps lots of institutes in india as well as other countries they are providing cfps exam preparatory classes okay they will just tell you how you can utilize the fph in a particular manner so you can just join their classes if you are interested okay but nobody is going to give you the full coaching on that fph okay so it is it is not possible to give full coaching after that whenever you got that pass examination your name will be secured or displayed on the cfps credential holder directory as i told you uh, the top certifications will be having their credential holder directory so it will be shown over there so if you want to pass uh, if you want to check any individual who is claiming that he has cfps or he is claiming to have cfps you you just directly go to the nfa website and check out whether that particular guy is holding cfps examination or not okay so in the near future in the sunday maybe i'll be taking one webinar for you in depthly we will discuss each and everything about cfps so i hope this video was informative for you if you like this video press the like button as well as share with your friends so that they can also be got benefited so thanks for watching have a educative day